has to decide whether or her name is Hudson, not Avery. <laughs> Today I'm here with part two of my November reading wrap-up. I read a total of 11 books. I talked about the first six in part one, so if you haven't looked at that, then go check that out. But here are the last five books that I read, so without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read is Bittersweet by Sarah Ockler, and I ended up giving this a one out of five stars. I did not like it. It follows a girl named Hudson Avery who was a skating star until her hopes and dreams were shattered when her father left her family. Now she works at her family's diner as the designated cupcake queen. Then news of a skating scholarship comes forward and Hudson needs to decide whether or not she's going to hang up her skates for good or go for the skating scholarship. Most of the time the book was just straight up problematic and I just found it really boring. The main saving grace of the book was Hudson's little brother bug. He was literally the cutest little child in the entire world. The relationship between Hudson and Bug was probably the only reason I kept reading the book. Hudson really bothered me as a main character. She was just annoying and self-centered and I also really didn't like the love triangle. I didn't feel like there was any chemistry between either of the two boys that Hudson was seeing. And I just think it's an overdone trope and I'm just sick of it now. I just don't want any more love triangles, okay? I also think the relationship between Hudson and her mom was ridiculous, like totally unrealistic. She's supposed to be like 15, 16, and she was paying the electrical bills for her family. And I'm sorry, but like, I think that's unrealistic. Like maybe like she would contribute a little bit, but the whole thing, I don't think so. I also don't understand why half the book is all about how the diner is going to close down, but then it's literally always jam-packed and Hudson's mom keeps asking her to stay and work overtime because it's always jam-packed. That just makes no sense to me. Also, Hudson's best friend Danny was super annoying. She was always getting mad at Hudson for like canceling girls night to hang out with boys, but then she would do the exact same thing and it was just like hypocrite. I just, I just know with this book. I do not recommend. The next book that I have is The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter. Or Slaughter, I'm not 100% sure which one it is. Still hoping that it's Slaughter. I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really liked it. The book is set in 1989 and it follows Charlie and Sam whose life completely changes one night when their mother is brutally murdered because their father is a lawyer who represents people that many people would not want to represent. Now, 28 years later, another crime is occurring in their town and it involves a young girl named Kelly. Charlie was the first witness on the scene and she begins to realize that this case is very similar to what happened to her and she begins to remember some things from her past that she would much rather forget. This book was so much more than I expected. I expected to like it, but I didn't think I would like it this much. I didn't think my mind would be like completely like fucked up after it. The writing style instantly pulls you in right from the beginning and you need to know what happens next. The book is definitely dark. It's very emotional. It's very graphic, like very graphic. You definitely need to go into it with caution. Just lots of caution. That's all I'm gonna say. Like a lot of caution. I loved every single character in this book. I thought they were all so well developed. Rusty 100% was my favorite. I also really liked the character dynamics between Sam and Charlie and how they changed throughout the story. I also really loved how you would get both crimes dissected throughout the story so you would get little bits of information from each one to eventually piece the whole story together. I thought that was really cool. I definitely did not see half of these twists coming and I highly recommend it if you're into psychological thrillers because like this book messed with me. The next book I have I also gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads and it is Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. After spending a year at a boarding school in New England, Suzette is returning home to LA where her crush Emil is and her brother Lionel who was recently diagnosed with bipolar disorder. To make things more interesting, Suzette begins to develop feelings for the girl who Lionel is in love with. As Lionel's mental health begins to spiral out of control, Suzette needs to give him the emotional support he needs as well as trying to juggle the rest of the things in her life. I 
loved this book. I expected to like it but not as much as I did. I've been hearing such amazing things about it from everybody so I was very excited to find a copy of it. The diversity in this book was so well done. Every character was unique and had their own personality but they were so well developed. It not only explores sexuality but also nationality and I thought it was really well done. I really loved the family dynamics in this book. I thought they were so incredible and I wish I had a relationship like Lionel and Suzette have because they are the cutest sibling pair ever. Like how mental health was represented in this book, I felt that it was very genuine. I think that there was the perfect amount of happy moments and sad moments and serious moments all thrown into one to give a very realistic portrayal of mental illness. I also think that the way that Suzette came to terms with her sexuality and how it was explored in this book was really well done. I think that is going to help so many people after reading it and I highly recommend it if you haven't read it already. It's real, real good. The only major problem I had with the book was that I felt that it stopped very abruptly like it just ended and I was like okay but like I need to know more but really that's the only complaint I have. The next book that I have is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Allure. I'm, I'm never gonna be able to pronounce that. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The book follows Aristotle who has never really had many friends. He likes to keep to himself on most occasions. He meets a boy named Dante who is unapologetically himself. Over the course of two summers, the boys learn what friendship means to them as well as trying to come to terms with who they are as individuals. I've heard so many people rave about this book. It's so many people's favorites and it's changed so many people's lives. In the beginning, I really didn't like Ari. I thought he was really annoying and just that Dante deserved so much better than him. And Dante is a little precious cinnamon roll and he needs to be protected at all costs. I just love him so much. But as the story went on, Ari really grew on me and I started to like him a lot more. His character development was very well done. I really liked the boy's friendship and how it developed throughout the story. I really liked how identity and sexuality was explored in this book and I also really liked the family dynamics. It's not often that you see parents who are actually involved in their kids' lives. So so it was really nice to see that in a book. I really liked learning about the Mexican culture and how incorporated it was in the story. I thought that it was really interesting to read about. The only major pitfall I have about the book was the dialogue. At times I thought that it was like super unnatural and just stilted and it just didn't flow very well. Other than that, I highly recommend the book. I think that is going to help a lot of people just like Little and Lion. So if you haven't read this, which you probably have because everybody has then, read it. The final book that I read was actually one of my viewers' short stories. He emailed me and asked me if I I would read it so I said all right. The short story is called Thanksgiving Delight and is by Rich Rubin and I ended up giving it a one out of five stars. I just don't think it was for me. It follows a young married couple named Chris and Brenda and they're attending a Thanksgiving dinner at Brenda's father's house and Brenda hasn't seen her sister Donna for a very long time, so she's more than ecstatic to go to this dinner. Chris is anything but ecstatic. So when Chris ends up crossing a line with Donna, she convinces him that it's okay and that she can convince Brenda to be okay with what happened, and that's basically the premise of the book. The book was very fast. It was only 42 pages, so it flew by quickly. I think that just the whole sister trope isn't for me. I didn't like the dynamic of it. I felt that the writing just became way too repetitive and it was only 42 pages so I feel like it shouldn't be repetitive at that point since it's so short. The author did mention that there was going to be a sequel and I felt that it ended very abruptly so maybe that will flush out the plot a bit more. Who knows? I guess if you read the sequel you'll find out. But overall I just don't think that the book was for me. Alright guys, so that was my wrap up part two for November 2017. Let me know down below if you've read any of these, what y'all thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!